How do guys? Right, so it's come to that time here where we're obviously going to make some more lead. So if you've already seen my videos, then you've seen my videos and obviously you know what I do. Well, this one I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to do it on like the sem semi-cheap. Yeah, so anyone can do it, really. So you don't have to do it professionally, uh, but you don't have to do it too cheaply and end up with basically a load of crap. Now, when you're making leads, obviously you're going to need some form of mould. Yeah, you're going to need a few things. Yeah, so I like to use these. These are the CNC's. Now, the reasons why I like to use these: one, you get four leads done in one hit. You can get them with more. You can get them with like say ten. Yeah, but when you're putting all the loops and stuff in a ten one, you feel like you're forever doing it. Obviously, you're going to need something to join that together. Now, you can use um, basically the market store clamps. Bear in mind you're going to need other things as well. All the market store clamp is to literally hold it together. Yeah, that is all it's for. You can put two on. Uh, so if you've got a bigger mould, you can have two. One one side, one the other side. If you're on these smaller moulds, then normally one is just enough. Yeah. Uh, you're going to need a few other things as well. Obviously you need your, the lead. Yeah, so you obviously got to get your form of lead, whether it's scrap lead or lead from the... Um, straight from off the shelf yeah which is going to be very very expensive which is what you put on your roof um you can get it from the scrappy if you got mates obviously what are in the building sort of trade you can get it off them you are going to pay for it no matter what now lead prices just like everything else it's all gone up everything has gone up even the molds even the cheap molds you used to get these cheap molds for like 10 to 15 quid well i'll put a picture up now so you can see what you can get them from too just for the cheap molds but your your better molds your cnc's are obviously going to be a lot more but they do do a lot better job so i'd rather use the cnc molds the main reasons why when they're joined together and you're doing your casting your lead comes out uniform both sides so when you've got your cheap molds they end up coming out a little bit like that so one side they're not always dead on sort of thing so it, it will actually alter alter your casting ability because the lead is not true in flight to begin with where when you got your cnc's that's how they come out yeah they come out pretty nice and uniform all the way around now you can go old school obviously once it's coated then it's going to look a little bit like that okay in obviously whatever color you like to go i like to go for this my own mix yeah this is like a stony sort of pattern the reason why is every late bed what i've been to uk france up and down the country all over the place all the late beds have been this color now if i'm landing it onto weed then yes obviously i've got the green yeah so that's obviously going to stand out so then i might go to a green lead but the late bed underneath the weed is still not green yeah if you're landing on silt it might be like dark sort of black or clay sort of color so you you can mix and match your leads to whatever you want does color really take a part yes and no i've caught fish on white leads i've caught fish on pink leads i've caught fish on yellow leads i've caught fish on coloured leads i've caught fish on the box standard painted leads what we used to use many years ago it is just really a confidence booster but it is also an extra edge it might only be one percent but one percent is better than zero percent isn't it so i do like to try and mix it to virtually the late bed the pinks and the whites i only use them really if the water is really really murky and I'm wanting to try and draw, draw that fish down. So then obviously I'll pull pinks and whites out. It's only for a visual. That's all it's for. I apologise for light. It's down there. I can't bloody see the camera either. So I might be looking at the camera. I might not be looking at the camera. It's over there somewhere. But you're going to need some other basic tools as well. So obviously you're going to want your lead, your lead pan and stuff like that. I like to use these. Cheap and chatty. Aluminium pans. Wooden handle. Reason why I like to use a wooden handle. If I'm using an all metal handle, that is going to be as hot as what the pan is. So that is the reason why I like to use a wooden handle pan. It's aluminium, 
it's not going to a massive great heat the lead will melt before the aluminium does and i've never had one of these where they burn through they sometimes change shape and stuff like that over a long period of time and you can either hammer it back into position or you can bin it and get another one they're only like seven quid for these little pans they're not expensive it's a milk pan that's all it is and what i like about the milk pan you've got these little uh, pouring spouts so as long as you haven't got a that full of lead it's manageable you've got your lead molded you've got your loops and swivels in there you can pour it straight into it when you use the ladle so here's a homemade one come from home bargains i've had the proper one stainless steel yeah so it's obviously going to do a job you can get your cast iron ones what way a bloody ton and different shapes and forms and stuff like that but once you actually do your ladling as soon as you go like that that is trying to set in there yeah, so you have got to be very quick transporting it from the lead pan to the ladle into your mould. Now if you've got multiple moulds, what has got more holes than say two, that is doing four leads, but it's only got two holes, so I've only got two filling points. So that is manageable to do it through the ladle or just direct right out the pan. By the time I put all the loops and swivels back in there, the pan's been back on the heat again. It's ready to do another pour by the time we've got everything back together and joined up so the the only time i'm really using the ladle is that if i'm doing a big major batch and i can't physically lift that because the amount of lead what's in that so that's the only time i'm going to go really with the ladle when i'm going for huge amounts so i'll i'll get it all done and it'll all be going but there's nothing stopping you Having a smaller quantity in there, do a few leads, put some more lead back in, let that heat back up again, do a few more, you get a little bit of a break from it. It does get very, very repetitive. And it is also a bit of a chest killer. Yeah, and to be all fair, it is one of these, it will shorten your life big time. So if you want to do it, obviously you do it on your own wrist sort of thing. Yeah. Would I advise to do it? No. It's more of a hobby but you can also earn a bit of pocket money from it as well mind you but you can earn a bit of pocket money and the reason why it's mind you is because everything else has shot up in price now i'm talking coatings loops swivels the lead has gone up in price obviously you need the equipment like the gas and stuff like that as well you got your coatings you got your time for doing it as well everything's shot up in price but no one's willing to really pay big bucks for leads because they can just go and buy say like a quarter lead for like two three quid each and um you're just getting a painted lead yeah well it hits the late bed a couple of times the paint scratches off and then it, it's it's virtually like a bare lead yeah where these coated ones they take heck of a lot more punishment now with your coatings you can get a few brands out there uh, there's a company mod they do lead coatings uh, they are on the cheaper side it's little bit fluffy in the coating so when you pick it up it's like a flower yeah when you do it between your fingers i like to use the hls ones uh i have made my own with magnesium and stuff like that it, it, they really do get your chest the hls ones do get your chest and it is very cancerous as well now i stopped and then just literally started doing it just for like pure hobby sort of thing as soon as you start to feel your kidneys hurting in the bag instantly stop yeah because that's a bad sign yeah you can get blood poisoning from it as well and then you're always better off wearing gloves now i like to use two sets of gloves obviously you've got heat gloves what you're going to need you're going to be touching hot stuff and then in here somewhere i probably took them in the house here we are just some box standard gloves yeah just to stop you touching the bare lead all the time because it is it's just habit we get an itch on the eye we obviously brush your eye you don't realize that you got lead on there and you get in lead going direct into your eye straight into your blood point uh, into your blood and then you're going to get lead poisoning so if you've got a, a normal pair of gloves these are like a bit waterproof sort of thing on the bottom and then obviously cloth on the top you pick them up from all over the place and not expensive but once you have got an itch you can just literally take it off have your itch jobs are good and put your gloves back on yeah so that's what i'm saying other things you're gonna need 
also there's some type of cutters for obviously cutting up your lead so you can make it into more manageable sort of sizes to get into your pants you don't want to be putting a um, big massive sheet in there because one you can't lift a bugger and two it's not going to fit in the pan so you need something to obviously be cutting up your lead so i like to use these tin snips here what's well, actually got the like spring loaded sort of thing so they open the cells back up so you you whistle through it very very quickly you can use normal tin snips but i find these ones a lot better you want some forceps and make sure you get long forceps you don't want to be doing it obviously with a short set because otherwise you're going to burn your arms uh if you can see on the wall here you might be able to see it i've got a little wall here a little rack i've got two racks actually and they've got little hooks on there now all the hooks are for once I've actually coated the lead, they are just going to get hung on there to cool on their own. Yeah, which I find comes out with a better, stronger, harder finish. When you drop them in water, it's rapidly cooling it. That lead is shrinking. The plastic coating isn't shrinking. And you get like a sweet sort of wrapper sort of feel on it. And it, it, it can rattle around a lot. Great if you're pipe fishing because you want that extra attraction. But if you're carp fishing, you don't really want that. And not only that... Once the lead has shrunk through heat contrast, the coating's weak. So it's only going to take a couple of bashes on the ground and it's going to start to chip away and peel off or even just drop off over time. Where when you do it that way, you can keep on using them, using them, using them until you've either had enough or you've lost the lead for whatever reason. So that is that. I also like to use the system what I call dry casting yeah so there's no water I don't quench the leads in water I used to and the reason why I stopped doing it one it slowed me down massively once you quench them in water you cast your lead you drop it in water you take them outside once they've cooled down obviously you've got to tip them in some then you've got to wait for all the water to evaporate away but you'll never get all the water out the lead because it's a little bit like a boiler once you've done your boiler and it's hair dried it's going to suck in moisture so once the lead has gone into the water it's sucking it in so there's water actually inside the actual lead so once you do your coat inside if you don't get it right and let the steam come out the actual lead and then you put that into the coating and then you heat it back up and then the steam comes out then you've got the steam trapped between the lead and the coating and that's going to cause you problems as well so i like to use dry casting so what i use it's a stainless steel cooking pan that's all it is so i cast my legs and they just get chucked straight into there i don't have to fart about with try dry out the legs try unsteam them and stuff like that i can just literally drop them in there clean them up and then they're ready for coating straight away just like that no drying out or anything now regarding heat source obviously you're going to want some type of stove Propane, in my opinion, has always been the best because it is much, it's a much higher heat tolerance. It will go at a much higher rate. So one, it's going to melt your leg quicker. Two, you're always going to get better finished ones. But for this video, we're, like I say, we're doing it semi-cheap. So what we're going to use is a regular camping stove, fishing stove, whatever you want to call it. And then just a normal can of Coleman. Yeah, now this is actually 7030, I believe, or 7040. Uh, it should be 7030. Yeah, 7030. So you've got 70% butane, 30% propane. So it has still got that bit of propane in there. So we are still going to get a touch hotter. But not only that, through winter, try using butane, ain't gonna happen. You can't even light the bugger. It would not flare out at all. This will to a degree, and then as soon as you get roughly about 12 Celsius, then it ain't gonna work. So that's, you can use propane all year round, no problem at all. But like I say, gas is expensive. So that's what we'll be using. Regarding cleaning the lead, you can use the old way, what I call the caveman way, which is an old file. But when you're whistling through one to 200 leads or even more, doing that with a file is a solid day's work on its own. So to cheat that, you want, a belt sander or a disc sander now i will actually clamp that to my desk because i just use the og clamps yeah i'll clamp that to my desk and i'll show you what it looks like and when when you're doing these leads it's just a matter of case getting getting a chair down get all your leads you cut them off so you take all the tags off 
which are basically them, your excess paws, so your tags, you cut all them off so it looks like the actual leg, but you'll always have a little bit sticking out where you've cut it off. And that's the bit what you need to clean up, because if you cast sight, you've got a sharp edge where it's trying to penetrate out the plastic coating, and it will just split it. Yeah, over time it will split it, and then it is, you've wasted all your time and effort doing all the coating lead. So giving them a little clean up, it's not a big job with the belt sander. It is risky, you've got to watch your fingers, and you've also got to watch the lead dust, because that is throwing off lead dust like crazy. So you do want to be masked up, or have your face covered up at some, some form. The reason why is the lead dust is going everywhere. If you're breathing it in, you're getting direct lead poisoning again, aren't you? So that's what you got to think about. And it will really bugger up your chest, just as much as what the coatings will. The coatings itself, it is plastic. You are burning plastic. Easiest way of saying it, if you've got a, um, a pot bottle and you chuck it on a fire and you can smell that smoke, that is really what it's going to smell like. And over time, it does you in. Yeah, it does do you in. But the hobby itself, it is, even though it affects your body massively, it is a really enjoyable, therapeutic hobby to do. It really is. Unless you've got a thousand a week to do or a thousand a day to do, then it's, you just don't want to do it. So, they're really your basics. So you obviously want your forceps, you want longer forceps. You are going to want your blowtorch as well. Now I like to have two blowtorches. This one's a little bit buggered. This is my old school. I broke the cap off it. These are running off propane. Now I want these to be running off propane because I want to heat up that lead on both sides evenly before it goes into the coating. I have used butane before with the older little switches, uh, basic heads should I say. Couple of things with them. One, you can't heat up the lead correctly. Secondary, that flame is normally always on. So you put it down, you got your flame blaring out, you're working away, it is quite easily to cause yourself more harm by catching the flame accidentally. And you're gonna burn yourself. So with these ones, let me just turn it on. Let's get set right. running out there we are so as i let go of the trigger it turns itself off so i can put it down and it's manageable yes the tip's still going to be hot but i've not got a flame coming out yeah that made me jump now it was actually that but with i've had this question a couple of times what blowtorch would you recommend really one what is suited to you one what you feel comfortable with and stuff like that it's no good having a blowtorch you can spend you can spend hundreds on these but you really don't need to i think this head was about 25 quid and the gas bottles are well they used to be a tenner i don't know what they are now they'll probably double that because cost of living etc what that has got to do with us living i don't know but like i say everything's gone up in price so they've probably gone up in price but i do like to use two so if i if i'm on a job and i'm doing it if that one buggers up i've got a backup one here so that's why I like to have two, yeah? So I can at least finish my job. I've got it all laid out. Instead of putting it all away and then it's like, oh God, here we go. My blowtorch is buggered. I've got to wait a week or two before I can get another one. I've got one there. So I can just crack on with a job and then I have it done easily. But I don't need to be using these yet so we can turn them off. So as I said, they're propane. That's what I prefer to use. You do need these, your heat proof gloves. And the reason why you need your heat proof gloves, if I go touching that mould with these gloves, they're just going to melt straight through and that's going to be melted direct to my hands and I'm going to be in hospital straight away. So I need those ones on. They are a little bit columbulant to play with and you do need to bed them in as well. Yeah, so the more times you use them, the better to do get, but they do obviously get damaged over time, so you will end up replacing them and you'll have to start all the process again. But once that is scalding hot, roughly about 350 Celsius, I can pick it up for a few seconds and not get burnt. Do it with them, like I say, I'm getting melted direct to the mould. Yeah. So I do prefer basically welders gloves, that's all they are. Yeah. They're not expensive, I think those ones are about six quid, but it's 
six quid to save my hands I can take that any day yeah so I've got my pan there which is my dry casting pan like I say there's no water I don't need to quench them in water if you quench them in water with steel quenching it in water yes it will harden it with a lead it's gonna cool down itself anyway you don't need to quench it like you would steel it's not going to really harden the lead up that much anyway what I found hardening the lead up the more times you clean your lead so say you've got scrap roof lead it's got builder cement or silicon or whatever on it then that's where you need to be cleaning it because you don't want to be putting that into the mold and getting basically a load of dross swarf crap whatever you want to call it going into the lead you need, you need to clean it and I like to do mine three times so when I'm cleaning them I melt down the lead in the pan I pour it into cake tins which makes it manageable sizes again then what I'll do let them cool down I'll redo them and I'll do I'll repeat the process depending on the lead between two and three times it's normally three times so that way I'm making the lead more pure I'm knocking all the crap out of it because with roof lead they do actually put other contaminants in there like nickel and stuff what keeps it shine I'm not bothered about keeping the shine I want to get the hardness of the lead so I want to get all the nickel and tin and all that crap out so then it is just pure lead so all the nickel and the tin will float to the top I can clean all that lot off underneath I've got nice clean bare lead but the first time you do this with these cakes it'll come out like a purpley sort of colour and that's where you still got a little bit of like tin and stuff in it so that's where I'll remelt it down until those cakes will just turn pure silver yeah and then that is pure lead so I'm making like ignuts really but once you've got a load of those done it's easy to fire them into your pan so as your pan's getting empty you just chuck a couple of those in they're melting away as you're getting ready or having a little break sort of thing right so what we're going to do we're going to set this belt sander up and uh, I'm going to show you how I actually do the belt sanding on the actual cleaner I'm not going to turn it on I'm just going to give you an idea on obviously what is what sort of thing right so here we go so here's my uh, belt sander it's all G clamped up. I've not plugged it in or turned it on or anything like that. It's just to give you the idea. Now, because you sat down directly in it, obviously you're going to be getting lead thrown at your face. And it's obviously going to be going over there. It's going to be going over there. It goes absolutely everywhere. So you are going to have a bit of a clean up, obviously, after this process. Uh, but once you get, get through a load, like I say, if you're doing a lead with a file, you're there you're up and down up and down three or four minutes you might have just done one lead but when you're on here it's so much quicker it is literally three to four seconds per lead that's better than three to four minutes per lead isn't it so you can see how many you're going to go through so what i'll do i've got a little shelf here as you can probably guess with the hole i'll have all my leads here and then on the floor I'll have a tub what's basically got a cloth in it so obviously once I've done my lead I'll just drop it into there grab the next one repeat the process and into there now bear in mind I'm going to be having a visor on that's going to protect my eyes and my face I'm also going to have a mask on as well normally I just use like you know the little neck scarf sort of thing that's really all I need it's just to stop me breathing it all in and stuff and then as I'm on there obviously that is turned on on continuous you want to make sure that is nice and solid and stable if it's not solid and stable it's going to be rock dropping all over you now doing leads don't wear your best clothes yeah obviously you want something rough on because you're going to get lead on you make sure your feet are protected you don't need to wear steel toe caps or anything like that if you're carrying obviously lead then it's worth it just in case you do but you don't want your best footwear on because you're going to knacker it up on the very first time yeah and same with your clothes because you're going to get lead spatters burns and all sorts but doing this also you got your lead and the fine art is is how to put it onto here yeah once this is going you don't really want it on this flat edge because this flat edge is hard so in between the roller and the flat edge you got a little flexi part and that is where I like to work not only that once I turn it on I've still got my adjuster so wherever the belt's trying to go whether it's up or down I've been actually doing a bit of wood with this one so that's the reason why it's so white 
I will change it over. You can, I just use rough grits on these. I think it's about 120s, 140s, something like that. I don't need it perfectly smooth, yeah? So if you go down to a smooth grit, so say like a um, 1200 or something like that, you can have your lead on there much longer. So between 140 grit and 160 grit, I find it's perfectly fine. It's rough, as you can hear, and it, it actually takes the lead off nicely. Now, these are already done, yeah? You can see there where they've been done. But like I say, visor, mask, all that lot, that's turned on. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to brace it just like this, because I only need to do this edge with the CNC molds. They come out very good, yeah? All this line and that lot's all clean already. When you get your cheap molds, you'll need to go around the whole entire lead. But when you use the CNC's, you'll only go where it's actually the excess pour is from. So I'll literally have that turned on into the pot, grab the next one. Look where it is on that side, yeah, and then I'll, I'll curve it, yeah, so I'm still keeping the shape of the lead. I don't just want to hold it on flat, because if I hold it on flat, I'll end up with a flat edge. So I'm going to go with the context of the lead and the actual shape of the lead, and just literally give it this twisting motion. I don't need to force it on there, it's just gen gently press it on and then just work with it into the part next one. And just keep repeating the process. And this is what I say, you get through ever so quickly. Now, if you've got your cheat moulds, you'll have your horrible line going all the way around it. And you'll normally end up with a lot of overspill going all the way around the old lead. So then that would be a matter of case where you hold the loop and the swivel, the top of the lead, and then you use the bottom of this and you'll go down, turn the lead round, down, a bit on there, a bit on there, and then take off the obviously the bigger lump as well so you are going to be a bit longer if you're using the cheaper molds but that is how i've always done my cleaning uh i did start off with a file but when you start getting more and more you need to start speeding up your production and uh, that was one of my biggest edges what speeded up my production your lead is still as good as what it is doing it with a file if not better because the file you can still get a flat edge on it but like I said, the downside is you're going to get lead dust over there, lead dust over there, lead dust all over you, all over the floor. And you're going to need a good hoover to hoover it all up afterwards. So that is how I clean the actual lead prior to coating. Right, so you're back up there, obviously that has gone. Now, if you can see on here, obviously they're not coffee stains, they are burn marks. Obviously that's where the stove has been. That is from the old propane one, not this little dingle dangle one it's also from the lead molds as well and then these lines here are actually caused by the belt sander obviously where the disc has obviously been spinning around and then it's just been catching here yeah and it's been grinding down this down so it's not for the faint hearted kitchen once you've got your missus or your partner yeah don't go destroying your kitchen yeah ideally if you've got a shed or a garage or something like that do it in there yeah do it in there now you do also want to be well ventilated as well that is also one of the main things what i nearly did forget to mention whether it's a matter of case of having the door open the hardest part is the cleaning the lead yeah so once you've got your lead that's the hardest part that is the dirtiest part of it yeah so if it's a nice dry day personally i'd advise to get it done outside yeah do it there if it is rough weather it's raining it might rain you don't want to be doing it outside because once that lead is melted and you get one drop of water in it, it's going to react and it's going to want to explode. Yeah, so you'll see the water, it will be dancing all around on top of the lead until it's evaporated away. As soon as more water goes in there, you can get a lead explosion. I've had lead explosions and I've ended up with it all over the roof and that lot. I've been quite fortunate, I've not ended up, I've had bits on me, but nothing really dramatic sort of things like that were close. Yeah, so it is dangerous. It's very dangerous. You're playing with fire, you're playing with gas, you're playing with molten substances. So you do have to take this very cautiously. Yeah. If you use your basic common sense, your basic health and safety sort of thing, be prepared. Yeah. All you got to do is turn your eye away from it for one minute and that's where it can go wrong. Yeah. So once you've got that pan on, try to keep an eye on it. Yeah. I don't mean over your 
face over it sort of thing, but keep an eye on it because it, it doesn't take a lot for it to go. Especially when you're outside, yeah. When you're inside, you're a little bit more protected, but then your chest ain't protected. So you're gonna to want to wear respirators and stuff like that. Now me, myself personally, cleaning the lead, once the lead is clean, I don't tend to find so much of an issue with the lead. The main issue then is from the actual coatings, what you're putting on, which is where you're breathing in plastic. Doesn't matter what respirator you have, can't really get around it it's going to come through all the filters now the best one what i've seen ain't cheap it's basically like a snorkel sort of thing what like a diver would use and it's where the pipe is actually going outside they're far from cheap you're looking at 300 quid and that's before all the prices went up so what the, those prices are now beyond me i'm not trying to put you off i'm just trying to say where it is if you want to do it for a long period of time you need to be kitted out and you need to be kitted out correctly no point in buying something cheap and then you've got to buy something better because then you've added that cheapness onto obviously the price of the better one what you're going to need eventually anyway so me i don't do it that often now yeah it's just here or there sort of thing yeah personal sort of thing that's all it's for so for that it's my life you're gonna moan but i don't wear out really yeah the cleaning's out there where it's all smoky and smouldering and all that lot and then everything else is done in here so in that pan i've got a bit of all sorts in there i've obviously got the the lead chopping so i'm, I'm not not wearing gloves but i'm going to, need to make sure we're cleaner we've got some alcohol wipes down there i've got the lead choppings yeah i've got wire yeah lead wire which is basically from the um lead core where i just take it out it's pure lead so that can go in there as well that's going to melt and then obviously i'm going to get a little bit of dross off it as well swath uh, swath whatever you want to call it so what we're going to do we're going to let, literally whack this pan on uh get everything heated up it is going to take a little bit of time it, it doesn't just go just magically like that it takes time and then what we'll do we'll do a little bit of casting we'll do some dry casting whack them into those pans it will get a little bit clitterly clattery that's what we're going to do. I need to build up all the loops and swivels because this is what you need and this takes bloody ages doing this. Obviously you want your loop and then you want your swivel. Now you can get many versions of these. Most people prefer the big eye swivel because they fit better onto the leg clips and heli safes and stuff. And you've just got a normal size 8 down on that size. And you have literally got to get your size 8 side and put that onto there, onto every one. That takes time yeah a lot of time depending on how many leads you want to do if you're only doing say 10 you're going to waste more gas than what it's actually worth just making 10 leads so if you're going to do it you want to be probably punching out like 30 or 40 at minimum sort of thing really i ain't got a great deal of lead in there uh, i'm probably going to get bit hard to say really probably about four or five molds worth yeah so five times four that's 20 isn't it yeah. but it's only for a video sort of purpose anyway that's all it's for i've got more lead knocking about what i don't need to be doing 100 leads keep repeating the process over and over again now it is also a matter of case of getting that mold to the correct temperature your first couple of times doing it you might heat up your mold but you might not get it to the right temperature so once you cast your lead you look at them it's like oh it's not come out right and the reason why it's not come out right is because your mold is not hot enough so if you come out with leads what look like this then your molds obviously not hot enough so you just got to keep going until it is and then your happy days then you want it to look like that sort of shape yeah that's how you want it to look so you are going to get your odd ones where they're not going to come out perfectly. You loop and you swivel what's in there. Yes, you can recycle your swivel, but you don't want to recycle the loop. Just melt it back down. Pull that out of the actual top once it's gone, once it's melted. So don't worry about if you've got some of them. It's because this isn't hot enough. You just need to get a little bit hotter. Once you're casting into it, it's going to warm itself up. We can just put it back onto the stove again and warm it back up that way. But normally, you'll have your stove, you'll have your pan, you've 
if you've got a big enough stove you can actually put that on the stove like that or just balance it on the top but make sure it's not going to be dropping in and then you grab your glove on so you can actually take it off but take it off gently because you don't want to be tipping that because that's going to be molten lead if that tips it's going to be all over your feet yeah it doesn't matter what shoes or protective footwear you've got you got to know about it simple as that so this is what we're going to do now we're actually going to cast them up because i've only got a few left yeah that's all i've got left to be coating up i'm gonna get a bit bored yeah so i want to do some more yeah but i'll be getting some different colors for it so we'll get this melted down now get this warmed up get the loops and everything set up jobs are good so while we're just uh, start to set up the uh, stove with the gas and all that sort of thing um i thought i'd talk to you regarding uh, different types of lead as well now all modern lead yeah anything really from say like 1970s 1980s they've all made it shiny so it just looks prettier on the roof yeah now you can get different forms of lead you can obviously get roof lead you can get ballast lead from boats as well not easy to get hold of that stuff like but that is good stuff divers weights yeah you can get lead from all over the place yeah it's just a you will's your oyster yeah it's just literally finding out where you can actually get it from it all depends on your location where you live now the best lead to get which is the rarest lead to get is victorian lead now victorian lead it is 100 percent pure lead yeah you haven't got no nickel you haven't got no tin you haven't got anything in it so once you melt that down it is pure silver straight away now also the other differences with it as well if you do a casting of the victorian lead and then you get the same size mold and then you do it with the newer lead you'll notice a weight difference because your victorian lead will be much much heavier so say you've got a three ounce mold that lead will probably come out more three and a half ounce when you do it with the newer lead you might be looking about three ounce 3.1 ounce because of the purity is what's actually in the lead itself now if you don't clean your lead like i do then you're going to get it either dead on the number or slightly under but you've also got to consider your coatings what you're putting on regarding on how many coatings you put on it's going to add on weight of course it is yeah so if i like to go double coated the reason why i go double coated is making it even stronger i'd rather have a better finished lead than something what i'm just going to chuck in and it's going to flake off and then i've wasted my time so i'll always go double coated i prefer texture that is just my preference a lot of people like texture because you haven't got the shine yeah when you have a, a smooth lead you'll always have the shine and you've got reflection and stuff on it so if you are in say like a um, shallow lake and that sun's blaring down it's a little bit like it's hitting a mirror it's going to flare off and that's why i don't like smooth leads i prefer to have textured because that sun can hit that regardless of how deep it is it won't reflect back so it's not got a chance of the carp coming across seeing that reflection and it's spooking it away all because of a shiny lead yeah so that is that but victorian lead like i say is the best type of lead to get if you can get it yeah but what i like to do with the victorian lead is mix it down so between the old lead and the new lead because i don't want the lead to be heavier than what i really casting it up to be i want it to be as near to it as i can yeah so if i'm doing three ounce i want it to be near three ounce if it's 3.1 3.2 i'm quite happy but i don't want it to be three and a half 3.6 um, ounce i want it to be nearer the three yeah same if i'm doing a four if i'm doing a four with a victorian lead um i might be looking about 4.6 4.7 yeah so then i might as well be using a five ounce lead instead but if you use the newer stuff then obviously i'm not so like i say i'll mix the older lead with the newer lead to get it obviously that little bit better as well um with the hold lead when you melt it you'll notice where once it's melted it looks quite lumpy yeah a little bit like custard sort of thing it's it's never runny like a, a smooth like water it's quite lumpy that's a victorian lead so if you get that great stuff just mix it down with, obviously with your other things and that anyway so this is all ready to be lit up now 
that's what we're going to do. We're going to get a slit. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention as well, don't use plastic candles. The wooden one will burn over time, mainly down at the end there as well, obviously where the flame's coming up. But if you're using a plastic candle, it's just going to melt away, isn't it? Yeah, and do you really want an handle? What well, is probably melted on the inside, and you do that and the handle slip off, and then I'll bang, the pan's out your hand. So that's why for wood ones, but well, they've got the metal studs going through them, so it's held on. Yeah, so that's that. So that's going to be getting turned on now. I'll pause this off camera as that melts. I'm not going to be wearing masks, because if I wear a mask, you ain't going to hear a bloody thing coming out of my mouth. So tomorrow, I'm going to be coughing a little bit. Yeah, but just for the video purpose, we'll get that heated up and we'll do a bit of casting. Okay, so let's get the ball rolling. Right, so the pan's on, the mould's on there as well. And now it is the long dreary time of building up the loops and the swivels, obviously while that is melting. Uh, this is the only bit out of the whole entire lead process, what I hate doing. Yeah, I despise it. Now, as you can see with my pan and that, I've got the handle set away from me, so I'm not going to accidentally knock it over. Try not to do any sudden movements or anything like that, because I don't want anything to fall off. And what I'm doing on these hooks, what I hang my legs on, I'm putting the loops and swivels on there. Because it's a four molder, I'm putting on in sets of four, so four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Yeah, and I'm going to just literally keep on going. If, if I've run out, it's not a problem. Yeah, if I, if I do more, then it just saves doing them next time. Yeah, but I'd rather have more done than not enough. Now, also what I'm doing, I'm also inspecting each loop and each swivel as I go across. So if I've got one what's got a yeah, bent eye, I don't want that. Yeah, so that will just go into the bin. It can happen. And every now and again, I'll get them where they're jammed up like so. I'm not going to pick them. I'll just throw it to one side and I'll unpick them at a later date. So I'm putting them on there. Like I say, a set of fours. I know where they are. They're easier to grab and so on like that. <clears throat> but that stove is burning nice. It's not on full heat. I don't want it to literally overcook it sort of thing. You can't really overcook it. But I don't want it to be burning it too quickly because I want it to heat up that mould as well. And regarding the mould, that's probably going to have to go direct onto the stove as well. So I can just take the pan off a little bit, put that to one side. Put the mould on there, but while it's melting the lead, or getting it to its worst degree, taking all the bitterness, coldness out, it's doing the mould at the same time. See, there we are. Look, I've got a broken one lot. Yeah, there's no nothing on it. It's just a loop. So that can go into the bin. Yeah, you do always get them. Now, when I was getting these, originally, I think it was about 22, 22, 50, somewhere around that, for a thousand. You're looking at nearly 30, 40 quid for a thousand now. So it's do everything, everything has just doubled in price. And a lot of the suppliers, what I used to go through, no longer do it. Yeah, because of the sheer cost. They struggle to sell stuff now, so they, they don't bother. Well, these are all the PTFE black ones. The best ones I prefer to use. You can use the brass ones or the nickel ones and stuff like that. But I don't like the silverness or the goldness. On them. So that's the reason why I'd rather use the black ones. The swivels itself look like the corner sort of finish. Um, I get I used to get them in two types, either the jet black or the like gunmetal sort of grey. I was happier with the grey ones actually because I never really got many faulty ones. But the barrels itself are um, flat barrels, are not the curved barrels, uh, which is what a lot of lead makers like to use. I've never liked them because they're not generally big eye for one. But I'm done with them. I've got more than enough there. For the amount of lead that I've got in that pan, I should have enough loops and swivels set up. So they can go back into my box. I'll have an inspection of that. Now we'll just wait and have a drink. 
Right, so the lid's melted. I'll pan you down a little bit so you're going to get a little bit more of a visual here and here. Yeah, and um, as you can see, there's not any smoke coming off of that because I pre-cleaned the lead. But that doesn't mean there's no toxins coming off the lead. There's always going to be toxins coming off of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that mould off. We're going to get the loops and swivels into it. I need these to begin with because I can't grab it with bare hands or the other gloves. We're going to loop it up, clamp it up, and then we're going to pour it up. And then see if it's come out true on the first time or if it needs a little bit more heat. There's nothing stopping you. Instead of putting your loops and swivels in, just clamp it, pour it, and test it. Great tip for not wasting your loops and swivels. So that's set. Need a screwdriver. Just to break the mould apart. And as you can see there, we have got four perfectly formed leads. So we, we know that the mould is hot enough. So they can go back in to melt back down again. That mould's getting hot now in my hand. We can melt them back down again. And what we're doing now, we've got to take these off for doing this part, getting all the loops and the swivels into it. And you do need to be careful because it is so easy to catch your fingers or your hand on the mould. And it's hot, obviously. So we'll lay these in while those other bits of lead what we just casted there. Those are in. Gloves back on. So we've got to touch the mould again. Make sure you get the right way up. Join that together. Clamp it up. And something what I like to do is just make sure they are all the same height. Yeah, just a bit anal, but I do like them the same height. Then I've got to have the swivels facing downwards. Keep it nice and flat. Once those are melted, that's going into there. And it's nearly there. So the screwdrivers there ready for breaking it. You can use silicon spray. If you spray that on your mould, in, on the inside, it will just stop it sticking so much, so it will just drop apart on its own. You can use that as well. It saves you using the screwdriver, but just for this video, we're just going to go as it is, sort of thing. I'm not going to get many out of that bit of lead anyways, but I don't need it for this video. Right, so they're melted again. So we'll pour again. So it's a nice steady pour. I'm not trying to tip it in hard, otherwise it'll fill one side up and not the other side. So just a nice continuous steady pour. If you stop, don't pour onto the top of it. Just literally pull it apart and then be done with it. So you wait for that to say, as you can see, it doesn't take long. That is not running out on its own. Take the clamp off. Break the mould. What we need to screw job for again. There we are. Glove off. Pair of pliers. Two. Four. And there, just into the metal pan. Just like that, just cooling down on the road, dry casting. Put them towards me, get some more loops and swivels in there. I have never had an issue doing it this way. The other thing 
if you go into water once you cut it off and then you put it back in there you put in molten lead maybe with something what's got water in there it's gonna psh, try and squirt out at you go in khaki handle because i put that handle on there a bit funny i don't want to obviously hit the handle and have molten lead everywhere Run it back up again Metal surface ideally better for you. You can use tiles and stuff like that as well. Use silicon spray, sometimes you can just knock them out like so. Well, as you can see, that one's stuck, so I've got to pull it out with a pair of Danny dies. I'm probably just going to get one more, and then that'll be all the lead gone. I'm used to working that on the right side of it, but if I put it over there. And you can't see it. I don't like having them flat on the surface because as you're knocking around and stuff like that, it, it pops them all over the place. So I like to have them hung up on the hooks. On my coating hooks, basically. So the, the coating hooks are doing two things in one. And this is more than like the last set. There's a little bit more in there, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to turn that off. It went on a full boil. It was that itself was roughly just like you run your kettle at when you're on the bank. But because it is not majorly cold at the moment, I don't need to have it on a higher heat source. So this time of year, you can get away with butane. But when it gets colder, butane ain't even going to touch it. What more you do, smoother they get. As you can see, they come out a lot smoother. And as you can tell, there's not really a lot of crap going around. I will need to do a bit of clean up on them. I'll also need a knife for the uh, for the eyes. You always get a, a little bit of a leg going in down there as well, especially with these being old moulds now. I knew where they are, obviously better it is. So we're going to let everything cool down, and then uh, I can start to talk to you a little bit more. I'd rather talk to you once this lot has cooled down. It's out where I'm not going to touch it accidentally, and then uh, we can go touch your nose as well. Right, so everything's over there now, what is hot. So I'm now going into the coating side. Um, when you order your um, coatings, they come in plastic bags. So you're going to need some type of little tubs to be putting them in. And the um, deeper they are, generally better they are. But I'm running out of this, so that's the reason why I put that one in a smaller one. And the reason why you want it deep is so um, you're not going to get the molten, the red hot lead going through the plastic on the bottom. So on here, I've got to be a little bit careful. Well, what I need to do now, because these are cooled down, that's obviously what they look like once they've been casted up. Yeah. I just need to snip off the ends, the excess pour mounts. There's one. Two. That's ready for melting again. You don't need to throw it away. Yeah, you can keep on melting it and melting it and melting it and melting it. That's a good thing with it. One's on the floor. And then now that's what it looked like. So that's really what you need to clean up. Need to give it a little check over. But as you can see, with the lead itself, it's pretty good. Yeah. It is really just that area there what I need to clean up. So and that's where I'll do it without circular motion. Yeah, just to turn it and then it's all jobs are good. Well, I'm not doing that today. I've shown you how to basically do it with the belt sander. So what I'm gonna do now is just go straight into the coating side. 
they're cool, so they can be moved out my way as well. Don't need to worry about steam coming out of them because we've done dry casting. So we get a coat in. You want a spoon. Now once you do this, just literally loosen up your coating. You don't want it all hard and compact where it's just been sat there over time. Get your blowtorch set so you know where you're on the right flame. Then I need some forceps. We've put these away because we don't need them. They're my coating ones. I know they're my coating ones because they are burnt up on the ends. So what we do, we clamp up the swivel. Now when I clamp it up, I clamp it up on the actual barrel. So I have actually then got movement on it, as you can see. Yeah, the swivel will move around. That gives me movement on the lead, what I can actually do. If I do it on the loop down there, I'm not going to be able to coat all the lead because my forceps are in the way. But I don't want to be coating the loop and the swivel. And the reason why I don't want to do that, because if I do do that, it will lose all that movement and mechanics. So this is where I use a spoon and I'll be very, very cautious on how I do it. But I need to heat up this lead now. So it's going to get a bit noisy. So I'm just going to whistle it up. Um, there is general rule, once it goes shiny, then you know that it's ready for obviously dripping onto the floor. So this is where you want to make sure your foot wear is appropriate. If you're wearing sandals or sliders or anything like that and you've your toes are hanging out. Not really the right job, is it? So let's uh, do this then. Because it's propane, that's all it needs. Yeah, if I were butane, I'd be there a heck of a lot longer. So I'm going to lay that into the coating, cover that over on that side, and then turn it over and then do the other side. And all I'm doing and going up to the top of the loop yeah not not over the loop but to the top of the lead just before the actual loop itself so i've got no coating on that loop whatsoever by doing it that way now i heat it on That turns it all nice and smooth. So technically that lead is good to go as it is there, but I'll always go a second coating. I want textured finish. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it over that side. Over that side. And now I'm going to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Tap off the excess. And that, guys, is done. So all that's going to do now, it's not going to go into water, it's going on this wall. Just like that. I've not had to touch the lead, that is cooling down on its own. So we'll do another one. And as I do it, I always like to check the lead, just make sure I've got like no excess lead sticking out here, there or anywhere. What I might have missed on the clean up process. If I have, I'll put it to one side and then obviously I'll come back to it after cleaning it. See what I mean about the blowtorch? As soon as I let go of it, it turns itself off. Tap off the excess, move it on. That makes it nice and sticky for the second coating to stick to it. Another five seconds, tap off the excess and then hang that up. Now, if you're using the cheaper coatings, the non-matte ones from HLS, if you try that, counting to five seconds, 
it's not going to work. Yeah, it will just smooth off straight away. They need to be the matte finish ones for you to be able to do that. So if you're using the cheaper coating, say like MOD or something like that, unfortunately you have no choice but to get a textured lead to chuck them into water. That's your only option because it's cheaper for a reason. The HLS has got all the additives in there, what's obviously baking it on, but it's, it's still keeping its texture. It's not a texture where it's all loose, where if you rub it across your hands, obviously it's going to come off. If you do it that way, that coating will not come off. Yeah, You'll not get no fluffy parts on you whatsoever, but the cheaper ones you always will, Yeah, because it's gone into water. We'll do another one. We've got to wait for them to cool down. Depends on the time of the year. Colder it is, quicker they're going to cool down. Hotter it is, obviously longer they're going to cool down. Now if I do want a smooth lead, I could go single coating as I have, but if I want to go double coated, and smooth this one off as well, I don't do the five seconds cool down, I can either hang it up there and it'll be like semi, or I just get the blowtorch back on it. Now I don't want to put too much heat around it, too long, because what will happen, as it's happened there, it's like give it a marble sort of effect because it, it's merged the colours together. So I'm not happy with that, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it into a triple coated um, texture. Because I still prefer my textured leads, as I said earlier. five seconds and even though that is triple coated as you can see it is even all the way around yeah still got all the movements and that lot i can't turn it too much because i don't want to catch anything on the coating yeah like the forceps of the loop or whatever because then it will just shoot it all up and then it's gone but that is done yeah that is how to make leads from start to finish guys it's been a bit of a long winding video but i've tried to go in a little bit more detail than some of my previous videos let you know the dangers so that stuff stinks more than that i can smell that heck of a lot more than obviously the lead what i've cleaned that's obviously hot i don't want to be putting that obviously near obviously my other cans and that because up that red tin is obviously full of them. I don't want to be putting a hot heat source over near that where it obviously can all go boom. So, really, if you use common sense, yeah, bit of health and safety, yeah, which is really common sense again, you can do it. Yes, I should be wearing a mask, yeah, for all the mask police what are out there. I should be wearing a mask, but if I was wearing a mask, you ain't gonna hear a single word I'm saying. So I'm virtually killing myself here to do this video for you. But these are for me, yeah? No one else, these are for me. My favorite color, uh, one what I've done well with over numerous years, and um, even on weed, yeah? I know I said about fishing weed, obviously you go to like a green lead. But do I really want to be chucking that lead into a thick, heavy clump of weed? No, I don't. I want to be looking for a clear spot. So if I'm looking for a clear spot, I'm looking for like a little gravel patch or a little feeding area. So then it's going to be basically bare late bed. So then I don't need a green lead again. So that colour to me matches up perfectly fine. I know on there they look like a really sandy sort of whitey sort of colour. But they're not. They're a really lovely, sexy colour. The camera just does not pick the colour out. Even on pictures, it doesn't pick the colour out. 
it, it just can't get the pixels on it. But on a wee delay, I am still looking for clear spots because my rig and everything is presented correctly. Pointless turning up to a lake and just chucking wherever and then hoping for the best. I want to be upping my chances by finding that clear spot where the fish have been feeding previously. I know for a while everything is set right, the traps are set right, anything what comes in, if it's going to pick the rig up, it's got a chance of walking the fish. Where if it's in weed, it's probably not. Yeah, hook mast over, etc. like that. So, on a weedy late bed, that colour to me is perfectly fine still. Uh, if I'm fishing a silt bed, it doesn't really matter on the colour of the lead because it's, it's going down into the silt. But if it is protruding out just a little bit, then obviously I will still change over onto a darker lead, uh, which is like my France black, which is underneath the camera, so I can't show you that. And uh, other than that, guys, thanks for watching. It is an enjoyable job. It is risky. It is bad for your health. But as I said, it's a great hobby and um, it does cut the cost down quite dramatic if you're doing it for yourself if you're doing it for others then no but for yourself it's cutting the cost down dramatically to say that i'd uh, pay about three quid for one of those leads from the shop not coated in that sort of coating it's going to be painted where if i paid for a coated uh coated lead like that say off corda or avid or whoever i might be looking four or five quid each yeah i know things have gone up in price but you can still make them obviously cheaper than what you can buy them from the shop when you do it yourself it's obviously going to be a lot cheaper than it is get, getting it from someone what's obviously done it from you so the next time you go buying leads off somebody it ain't going to be me but whoever it is don't moan about the bloody prices there's health hazards with it if you don't if you're not happy with the prices then you obviously you're not happy for that person to put their uh, life at risk are you so You'll have to fish with um, spark plugs or something instead. Other than that, let's crack off. See you later.